All right, folks, we're back again with another report. And in keeping with the fact that we are World Bigfoot Radio, we're going to be doing a little short talk here about one of the mystery hominid cryptids from another part of the world, specifically pretty much the opposite side of it, uh, way down under to the uh, land of Middle Earth, New Zealand, where on the North Island they have had reports of these creatures uh, going back to when the uh, – the Maoris showed up there originally and colonized it. The uh, creatures are called the M-O-E-H-A-U, which apparently the white colonists pronounce as the Mo-E-Hau, and uh, the, the Maoris pronounce as the Morho. So that's the pronunciation we're going to use, the Morho man. Uh, uh, the uh, area originally, when, when uh, they arrived there, there wasn't that much in the way of food sources to draw on. There were bats. There were birds. There was really nothing in the way of mammals there. The fish that did exist were freshwater varieties that were small. Um, wouldn't have made been much worth anything for catching and whatnot. If there was a mystery relic hominid living there, it would have uh, had to have been making a living off of eating a lot of vegetation, eating clams, uh, fishing in the surf around the ocean to get what it could out of there. So... From that standpoint, the existence of it seems somewhat doubtful. The uh, aboriginals, again, as I mentioned, had their own stories of these things. And uh, they said that when the uh, white colonists started showing up and moving inland, um, they started warning them that there were certain areas of forest that they should not go into, as these areas contained red-haired giant men who ate people. And people that have been getting enough reports from North America probably recognize that pattern as the same sort of thing we hear here. Now, before we quickly dismiss this as uh, there's no food for them there to eat and, uh, you know, there's not much uh, in the way of reports on these things. So, therefore, they just got this idea from somewhere else and they, they brought it along with them. Well, right not too far from is Australia. So, maybe they got it from Australia. When they were over there and then moved to New Zealand and brought the ideas of Yowie with them. Well, dismiss that idea from your your brains because uh, the genetic background that's been done on these folks uh, says that they came from the opposite direction via Polynesia. So they were not in Australia, did not know about the Yowies, and that cannot be used as an excuse for where they came up with this whole strange idea. But anyway, the areas where these things supposedly are, there's three of them widely separate locations. Um, one of them is in the Coromandel district, another one in the uh, Wanganui area, and third in the Caitlins on the Otago coast. And I probably butchered those names. Sorry if I did. Um, now, one of these areas, they actually had returning servicemen after World War II settling in the area. They were giving them grants of land there and trying to get them to uh, make some use of the area and farm it. But apparently it was so rugged and nasty that it was just almost impossible to grow anything on. And the, the farms pretty much caved. That didn't work out. And uh, again, the natives had legends about this area, and they were afraid of it. They wouldn't stay in it overnight. They wouldn't camp there, especially in this one valley. And this is the same area they were trying to get these folks to settle in. So eventually all the farmers didn't make a go of it, gave up, moved back out to uh, – more urban or, you know, other more far farmable areas anyway. And if you're interested in seeing where this is, you can go to Google Earth and look up the road to nowhere in New Zealand. And that's where the road goes to where it's now nowhere because nobody lives there. But uh, so apparently, like I said, these uh, the legends, the Morho man go back quite a long way. Um, no, mostly, again, from stories originating around the Cormandel area of North Island. Um, the Morho Man is named after the range of mountains uh, that many of the sightings came from. Like the tall, hairy beast from other continents, Morho Man is large, extremely hairy, a hominid with arms reaching down to around his knee area, and with a distinct odor. In some instances, he is said to have exaggerated fingers or perhaps even talons or claws. Sounds like Wendigo. Stories of Morho Man date back to before European settlers were making inroads into the country. It was always known to be a very dangerous creature to be avoided at all possible times. 
The name Morhau is the Maori word for the highest peak in the mountain range at the tip of the Coromandel Peninsula. Most of the legends spring from geological features of the landscape, and this peak is a sacred place to the Maori and be feared as mythical creatures supposedly live there. The mountain range is visible from a wide panorama in this area of New Zealand and also gives rare visitors a commanding view of the surrounding area. The stories of the Morho started circulating once settlers began making their way deeper into this area, as I mentioned before, firstly in the 1870s and 1880s. These were the gold miners looking for a place to stake their claims. They made their way in from the areas to the townships of Thames and Wahi, Wahi, uh, excuse me, it wasn't long before stories of the large, vicious bushmen started doing the rounds. Firstly, they reported being scared by large human-like creatures when they were deep in the bush. Then more ominous tales began to emerge, these of prospectors being killed or mauled by the Morho man. Even the local Mori told prospectors not to enter their dark bush areas alone. Two later main sightings of the Morho Man from the last 40 years are documented by Nicola McCoy in her book, New Zealand Mysteries, Secrets, Spooks, Conspiracies, and Con Artists, which calls 2005. And the first, an Australian tourist reported seeing the creature as she bushwalked in the region in 1969. She described it as looking much like a gorilla. In 72, another sighting was made by two pig hunters who said they saw a large creature approximately 150 meters away from them. When they reached the place where the creature had been, all they found were human-type footprints about 35 centimeters long. Uh, well, one thing out of all this information that is certain is that the Morho Man is not and will probably never be as famous as his possible cousins, the Sasquatch, Bigfoot, and Yeti. But local stories still endure, and until we have some definitive proof, the Morho Man uh, will remain just a story. And in the opinion of the gentleman that forwarded a lot of this information to me, who is from New Zealand, and thank you, Dave, for this information, he doesn't think that there's too much to the story, that it's uh, probably more myth and legend than reality. However, he is a pilot. And he has flown over one of these areas and taken a look at it from the air. And uh, he said he is in no big hurry to try and go in there and whack through the bush. Because judging from what it looks like from the air, it looks like it would be absolute hell to get through. And uh, as those of us that are familiar with these sort of reports from other parts of the world are well aware, these are the areas these things seem to like to be in. Where they're really difficult going. Humans have a terrible time trying to get around. The going is slow if not impossible but uh doesn't seem to make too much difference to them so anyway there you go the legend of the moho man from new zealand thanks everybody have a great day